So here's our center profile sketch. And if you recall in the previous video, we created this outline as a spline. And as before with the projected curve, we didn't use the actual splines. So I'll open a sketch on the right plane, which is our symmetry plane. I'm going to select our center profile sketch and use convert into this. So I'm going to use that curve then for my lofted surface. So I'm going to rename this center profile sketch converted. So I'll hide now my spline. Now before I create my first lofted surface here, I'm going to create a guide curve here on the top plane. So open a sketch here on the top plane. So I'm going to create a guide curve here that's going to control the curvature here between our center profile sketch and our projected curve here. Now this is going to be a two point spline. So just click anywhere there and press escape. And there's our spline. So what I need to do here is relate the in points of our spline to our curves. So if you click the in point here on the left, control select your spline here and add a pierce relation. And I'll do the same for the other end point. So click the other end point, click your projected curve and add a pierce relation. Now, if you look in normal to the sketch here, you can still control the handles here. And across our symmetry plane here, I'm going to add a horizontal relation here to this handle here. Now, after that, you can still move the in points and just control this by eye. It is possible to dimension these handles here. So if you click a spline handle, you can actually add a dimension to it. You don't need to do this, but I'm just showing you that you do have that option there to control the length of a spline handle with a dimension. So you can continue to manipulate the curvature on this by dragging the in point here. And I'm going to look for a smooth curve there uh, that's going to control our lofted surface. I'm happy with that. So let's exit this sketch. I'll rename this sketch to guide curve. So there's our guide curve linking our previous two sketches. So now we're ready to create our first surface, which will be a lofted surface. Now, if you don't have the surfaces toolbar, you can right click on any of these tabs here and turn it on. So we've got the surfaces toolbar already ticked. So I'm going to select a lofted surface. So the first thing are the profiles. So I'll click in this region here on our center profile sketch and I'll click in a corresponding position here on our projected curve. You can go down here and turn on the curvature combs and also the mesh preview. So let's just increase the mesh there to seven. And you can see there the way the surface is being created. Now for my center profile sketch, we've got some start and end constraints here. I want this to be coming off here normal or perpendicular to the symmetry plane. So my start constraint here is going to be normal to profile. So you can see how that changes the curvature there, but I can control it a little bit more using our guide curve here. So let's activate the guide curve dialog box, click the guide curve, and you can see there how that will pull the surface to follow that curve also. Now to control the influence of that guide curve, we're going to use the global option. So using the global option here will extend the influence of the guide curve to the entire loft. So that's it and click OK on that. Now you may have noticed if I go back in here that at this end here, the mesh is being compressed down into a point which is known as a singularity. And if you were shelling this out, then we might have to trim away this bit and create it maybe with the fill surface. But as we're not shelling this out, I'll proceed with this surface as it is there. But that's just something to note for future if you were shelling a model out. We're finished with the guide curve, so you can hide it. So that's our first surface created. Now to create the front surface here, which we're also going to create 
as a loft i'm going to need to first of all create a construction surface here to close off this end here so on the right plane let's open the sketch and using my shortcut here i'm going to sketch a three point arc so i'm going to make the top end coincident with this point here and similarly i'm going to make the bottom edge coincident with this point here so let's think looking normal here to our sketch and i'm going to draw a construction line linking these and if you use the shift key when you're adding a dimension here i can dimension the bulge here on this curve so i'm pressing the shift key here and i'll make distance here equal to 0.5 millimeters i'm going to use this to create a surface here which will be an extruded surface. I'm going to reverse the direction. This will actually be a construction surface. I'll just extrude that out there. The distance doesn't matter. I'll extrude that out there. The default 10 millimeters. This is just a construction surface. So this surface here closes off this end here and we're going to use this edge when we are creating our front surface loft. Now if I want to loft on the surface here, I'm going to need to split this front curve here into two. So to do that, I'm going to open a sketch on the front plane. And I'm just going to draw a line there anywhere coincident with the origin. So that line's on the front plane. And I'm now going to use the split line tool to split this surface into two. So you'll find this on the features and curves. So I'm going to select split line. So I'm going to use the projection option and I'm going to project the current sketch onto this surface here. I'm going to select single direction. Make sure the arrow is going in this direction and I'll click OK. Now the result of this is we have split the surface into two. Now, if you look here at your surface bodies folder, yes, we have two surfaces, but this surface is still one surface. The other surface is our construction surface here. We have split this up so that we have now two separate edges. So we can select those edges now when we're creating our loft here at the front. To control this surface here, I'm going to create a guide curve here on the front plane, and then I'm going to create another one over here at a distance of 100 millimeters. So open a sketch on the front plane and I'm going to draw a three point arc. So here's my three point arc drawn on the front plane. And as before, I'm going to use the pierce relation. So click the in point, click the curve and add a pierce relation there. And do the same on the bottom. Click this point here, click here and make pierce. Now, if I look in perpendicular to this sketch, I'm going to draw a construction line. And as before, I'm going to add a dimension. And if you use the shift key, you can control the distance there from our center line to our curve. And I'm going to make this 1.5 millimeters. So this is going to be a guide curve. So I can call this from guide curve one. I'm now going to create a plane parallel to the front plane at a distance away of 100 millimeters where I'm going to create a similar guide curve. If you control drag a plane, you can copy it. And now I'm going to specify the distance of 100 millimeters. So here now is our reference plane. And I'm going to open a sketch on that new reference plane and as before, use your shortcut key, create a three point arc. And I'm going to relate this to these edges here using the pierce relation. Again, can I remind you, make sure that you've hidden the projected curve before you do this, because we want to relate this directly to the edges there of our first loft. So press the shift key and add your dimension. I'm going to make this 1.5 as well. So now that is our second guide curve for the front loft. You can hide this plane. So let's create another loft now. So again, it's a surface loft between our top profile and our bottom profile edges there. 
So if you were to do this, this really is just creating a flat surface there that will close off that there. Now it does curve around here, but it's not picking up this edge here. And it's also not currently referencing our guide curves. The start and end constraints in this case are both set to none and will remain so. Click on guide curves here. Click your first guide curve. You can see how the surface now is picked that up and is following that. So let's pick our second guide curve here. And finally, I'm going to pick this edge here of our construction surface to close that off there nicely like that. So that's our front loft there. Now, of course, you could always come back and put in more guide curves and change the curvature of those if you wish. So there's our second loft feature. So now we have three surface bodies. I'm going to hide the construction surface now because we're finished with that. So we've got two separate surfaces at this stage. I'm now going to add a curvature continuous face fillet on this edge here. And this will have the effect of combining these two surfaces together or knitting the two surfaces together. So select fillet, select face fillet. Face set one can be this one here. So remember we have split that. So select those two and face set two is this one here. So for our profile, we'll select curvature continuous. So let's set our radius here to let's try two millimeters. Now we're not getting a preview yet, even though we full preview on. Uh, you need to look at the arrows here and make sure the arrows are pointing in. Let's try 1.75. So two millimeters will not give us a fillet there because we didn't get a preview, but 1.75 will. What would happen there is that the curvature is overlapping here, which would cause the fillet to fail. So here's a curvature continuous fillet, which is going to give us curvature continuity between our two lofts. Let's click OK on that. Now, if you look here now, you'll see as a result of doing our curvature continuous fillet there, we've blended together the two lofts. So now we have one surface there for the front part of our handle. To create the other half, I would just use mirror. So you'll find this on the features toolbar. Select mirror. Your mirror plane is the right plane. That's your symmetry plane. Now, we're not going to select features to mirror. For something like this, we will select bodies to mirror and we're going to mirror our surface body. Now you'll notice our surface body is named based on the last feature, which in this case was fillet one. Partial preview, full preview. So use bodies to mirror, click OK. So now this is what our handle looks like but it's still a surface model. Now, when I did the mirror there, you'll see that I've created a separate surface, but I don't want to do that. So if I go back into my mirror and select knit surfaces, this will join the two surfaces properly together. So tick knit surfaces and click OK. And now you see you have a proper single surface body here. If you use a section view tool and slice to the model, you can see that it is indeed a surface model. It's hollow at this stage. To convert this now into a solid, we will use the thicken command. You'll find that on the surfaces toolbar. Here it is, thicken. Select thicken. It has already selected our surface for us. And Tick this box, create a solid from the enclosed volume. In this case, there are other options. You can see here what it's doing here and you could control the thickness on that. But in this case, we're not creating a hollow handle. We will just create it as a solid volume. But you have this option here to tick inside one. So let's just tick on that. But it is solid thin wall handle there. But I don't want to do that. So let's go back and edit my feature here again. And I'm going to select this option here, create solid from enclosed volume. So this model now is solid throughout, as you can see there. So there you have it, our completed curved model of a door handle. 
and we had to use surfaces to create it and to create the surfaces we had to use splines. So hopefully you've learned how to use surfaces and splines here to end up with a solid model. If I look here now at my design tree, I've got one solid body and we still have that construction surface, it's still there, but I'm going to keep that hidden. You end up with a solid model of our outline here of a door handle. Thanks for watching.